We're going to kick things off by having a conversation around what collaboration first development is. To get the conversation started, let's bring in my colleague, Dan Walleen. Hey, Dan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, April. I'm excited to be here with you to talk about collaboration and all these things we can do. So let's jump right into it and start off with what does it mean to build real-time collaborative apps? I mean, we have a line of business apps out there. Some folks use SaaS, uh, software as a service type apps. So what if we wanted to build collaboration in? When I say that, what comes to your mind, April? When I think of you know collaboration and apps, I think of apps that I use every day, like Microsoft Teams and Slack and Word Online, Google Docs and all that. And to me, those kind of encapsulate what a collaboration first approach is and in an application. And when I think about it further, I guess I think of three main buckets of things that a collaborative app does. Uh, one being, you know, real time data exchange. How can like when we are talking about the word example, how can we, you know, see who's typing what when we're in a document and collaborate that way? Uh, the other thing I think of is real time communication. That's what Teams and Slack does really well, being able to chat and collaborate in real time. And then I think also about real time presence. How can we see who else is in the application and see if they're available or away? So those are the three main pillars I think that I think of when I think about collaborative apps, but curious to hear you expand on that, Dan, and kind of dive deeper into each of these. Yeah, um, I think for real-time data exchange, the first thing that comes to probably most people's minds, especially mine, is uh, WebSockets or one of those fallback technologies that browsers support because they provide a great way to get that real-time TCP IP type connectivity so we can get that, you know, close to instant data exchange uh, between browsers. But of course, as we get multiple people involved, that kind of takes things up a notch with that, but certainly possible. With real-time communication, you already mentioned a lot of the apps I use as well, like Teams or Slack or something like that. And when it comes to custom apps, how cool would it be, where appropriate, to add audio, video, or chat right into the app so that as people are working with real-time data, they could also even talk to each other, see each other, or chat with each other. But of course, to do that, we need to know when people are available, and that's where real-time presence comes in. So a little bit later in some of the sessions, as we talk about these different items here, uh, we're going to talk about Microsoft 365, and specifically, Microsoft Graph has some APIs that you can subscribe to to learn about people presence. Because, you know, April, if I'm going to collaborate with you and you're in a meeting, It'd be nice to know when you're out of the meeting and available so that I can reach out to you. Yeah, exactly. So we kind of set the stage here of what, you know, a collaborative first app would look like. Why don't we talk through, Dan, some scenarios of what this would look like? Yeah. So one of the scenarios we're going to talk through is really just real-time data focused. And let's say that April and I and maybe some other folks are going to collaborate on an application. And this particular application allows us to pick speakers for an internal company event that we're going to have. And as we do this, April and I and anyone else involved would like to see instant changes to this data grid that you see. So, April, if we were to pick some talks here for real, uh, what do you want to go with here? Uh, let's see. I really like uh, Denise and Klaus. Their topics look good. So we could go ahead and approve those two. Okay. And this is where real-time collaboration instantly kicks in because April, I might now respond with, okay, did you select them or do you want me to select them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. How do we know? Like, oh, what do we got to do? Refresh the screen to see like who, who, who submitted that button, who clicked the approve, right? And that is a real story, folks, because I've actually had to do this for real. And that exact scenario has come up where I say, hey, April, did you do it? Oh, yeah, I did. Just refresh your screen. Well, with real-time data, that could be instant. And then, you know, maybe we decline the last one. Maybe it doesn't fit in, but why? So we might want to add some notes, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Seeing those notes again in real time, similar to what we can do with Word or Google Docs, um, would be great for this whole experience, right? Without having to do that refresh and have that real-time collaboration. Exactly. And, and that's where collaboration, some of these challenges come into play that will be talked about a little bit later, because... If April types into one of these cells here and then I type in exactly the same time, we'd want to make sure that the data gets merged in in the proper order, just like Word Online, uh, Google Docs, and things like that do. That's pretty challenging, it turns out, to do on your own. So throughout some of the sessions coming up, you're going to learn a little bit more about options out there for doing that type of thing. 
So April, uh, another scenario we have is related to travel. Do you want to walk us through that one? Yeah, so I think we've probably all been here on this one. So common thing we have, say I want to travel from the United States here to South America. That could be a multi-stop point to, to get there, right? You might have to have a couple layovers to be able to get to the ultimate destination. Well, what happens when you have a delay and you miss one of your connecting flights? So what do you have to do? Well, typically you got to get on the phone with a travel agency, have them try to help you find an alternative route so that you can get to your destination. And it's a lot of being, getting on the phone with them, trying to take maybe handwritten notes, right? Or look at your phone and figure out where they're talking about. Not the most ideal, um, probably, right? <laughs> Experienced Dan, I'm sure you've been there too. Um, so wouldn't it be great if we could get some of those collaborative design aspects into this scenario by having an application where the uh, travel executive here can pull it up and it can show me visually what routes they're showing that I could take to get and reschedule that to get to my destination. So I can follow along with that and then icing on the cake being maybe I can add in some video chat so I can personalize the experience a bit more and be able to visualize that. So to me, that would be the ideal experience rather than having to juggle the phone and notes and everything. And I'm sure, sure you've been there too, Dan. I can't even, I won't name the airports, but I can't even tell you how many times I've been through this scenario. <laughs> many times. It's hard to keep track because, you know, they'll tell you, well, if you go through this city, it takes this long and this city this long. And like you said, you kind of have to take notes. But if I could just see it and if I could even suggest cities back, that would be pretty amazing. And we both could collaborate and possibly, like you said, from a customer service standpoint, you know, take it up a notch by adding a uh, video. So that would be pretty nice. Well, that's just two of an infinite number of scenarios, but there are some challenges that come up. We've already mentioned one or two of those already, but April, what are some of the challenges that you can think of when it comes to real-time collaboration in apps? Yeah, so I guess two really come to mind from what we just talked about. Uh, take that travel scenario, for example. That's like a global communication scenario where I might be in South America and talking with the travel agent in the United States. So the first thing that comes to mind there are latency issues. So how do we get around that? That could be a potential issue and concern. Uh, the other thing that comes to mind would be how do we choose the right technology? You know, you mentioned earlier web sockets. How do I know if that's the right approach versus some of these real-time collaboration techniques and adding that in? So those are the two that kind of popped out for me as potential issues. But Dan, I know you've built a lot of real-time collaboration into apps, so you probably have some yourself that you'd want us to share. Yeah. Um... I mentioned earlier, like in the notes, when we type at the same time, that's actually super challenging, it turns out. And so you actually need kind of like a get merge, but for data that's flowing into all these collaboration clients, all these browsers, if that's what we're doing. And that actually can be pretty tricky. You can certainly send the data with something like WebSockets or one of the fallback technologies, but actually getting it to work as you'd expect once it renders in the browser, that's a whole nother story. Uh, another thing that comes up is if we're doing, say, audio video. Well, now do you have dedicated hardware? Maybe you use some cloud options there. But it'd be nice if we didn't have to worry about that, of course. And then that also gets us into learning APIs. Uh, browsers these days do have some really nice APIs for audio and video and more. But do you really have time to build that from scratch? Or can we build on top of something that might be available? Yeah, so, you know, great point. So, so far, what have we did? We've addressed the, the challenges that we might face. We talked about some scenarios for collaboration first design. I guess the, the next thing sticking out that I'd like to ask is really how does this actually work? What would a collaboration first design approach look like? Yeah, and I think this really boils down to how do you start your apps in the first place? How do you architect? When you go into the meetings, what are you doing? And, you know, speaking from my own personal experience, normally we'll have a whiteboard and we'll start, specking out the architecture of the code, the data, security, APIs, things like that. But when's the last time you actually said, hey, that screen could really benefit if multiple people could join and collaborate on that data? Now, I'm not going to say that's right for every screen or even every app, because it's not, but there are many cases where collaboration would be super effective. Uh, April, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, so many cases where I could see where that where that would be helpful. Um, you know, I think in, in Power Apps land, because that's where I, I do a lot of my work, right? Like, wouldn't it be great to be able to have real time presence in a Power App and see who's working in at the same time, have real time notes and collaboration. So there's no 
shortage of instances where this would be really helpful. Definitely. Well, it's been great talking with you, April. Uh, why don't you walk everyone through what we're going to be covering in the rest of the event? Because we have a lot of good info. Yeah, this has been a really fun conversation. We have a lot of great sessions ahead of us. Um, I believe right after this, we have yourself, Dan, and Dan talking about real-time data into your apps and how we can bring that into your applications. After that, we're going to have uh, Pialis and Reza going to talk about adding real-time communication into applications. And you want to stick around also for the last two sessions we have with Aicha and George. They're going to be talking about bringing your application where your users work every day. This is all about the presence and how we can have presence inside of our application using Graph and all that. And then finally, closing it out, we have Bridget and Burke talking about how we can enhance development, collaboration, and productivity with some new GitHub technology. So that should be pretty exciting and definitely want to stick around for all the race sessions that we have. Uh, and with that, why don't we just go ahead right into our next session?